Hey buddy, it's John with Planet Tech, and today we're going to be doing another Q3D. This time it's going to be a top-down Pokemon styled game. I am also taking uh, the assets from all this from uh, Pokemon. Uh, specifically, you can actually look for these on Sprite Resources. They also have a Models Resource. Um, let's go through the tabs and I'll put the link down below. So specifically what we're going to be going through is that this is not going to be an exact clone but more of a simple lookalike to get us into Q3D. So as you can see it's not set smooth or anything like that. Um, normally what you could do is I believe in this, um, in Q3D you can set it set smooth or what you can do is go into a program like Blender and one of their options is set smooth. We'll be doing with that this is a little bit more than just dealing with construct 2 but again this is just the uh the pokemon he's in a rotation type format uh, again you can always do the cameras and everything but as this is not a straightforward 3d engine or like in unity where it does 2d and 3d it's a straight up 2d in this game engine um i decided you know we're, we're just going to keep it simple and we're just going to do um a simple basic interface UI and then we'll, we're, we're then we're gonna get more in depth when we actually deal with characters that move around so we're gonna have 2d sprite characters and then a 3d environment uh, angled down so we can actually see the town and village and everything and maybe do some communications and walk through some a uh, little bit of force and everything so as you can see right here I have a in Q3d if you have it um, or if you don't have it, I'll show you in a little bit. This is a uh, 3D sprite. This is a 3D object. And then here is another 3D sprite. It does support 2D sprites, but those get a little tricky. And as I said, um, well, this add-on for this engine is really, really good. It's not, it's so close to being really, really good, but it's just not where I would like it to be. Um, again, it said that uh, construct 2 doesn't support even some basic 3d stuff or build it into the you know into the engine but don't exactly build anything like command wise and allow the uh, community to do all that um, but that's neither here or there we're just dealing with what we have so again we have a rotating 3d pokemon and I'll pull that back up again um, so again, this is supposed to be a button. Uh, Q3D doesn't have a specific button, uh, and I was trying to use uh, to use a regular 2D button, and it would if I ha if I pulled it up in small mode, it would show it. If I made it larger, it would disappear. So that was kind of an issue I was having. So I decided to use a regular sp uh, 3D sprite right here as the button. I'd click on it, and here we go to a new scene. So for the code. We have on start of layout, uh, let's go back a little bit further, uh, Q3D, then what we're going to do is type in texture, not tracks, but texture. We're going to set the set texture animation frame. It's going to be zero, and that is because, uh, let's be frame number zero, diffuse map. Done. That is because and here we go um, so okay we have our button here our Pokemon logo here uh, you are going to need it's a new object uh, a key 3d master that's basically what renders uh, you're supposed to stretch it over anything that has a 3d object in it. it basically renders that object or makes it available to be rendered this is a 3d model or basically that is an entity uh, or it, it basically think of it's a point and it's saying hey this is a 3d object and we want you to render this block as a 3d object um, it's think of a temporary 3d object uh, a cube and it's saying okay until we get more information you just render you're gonna sort of render this okay so wireframe or shaded mesh or a textured mesh and then when we get okay um, like my 3D object is untitled OBJ. Once this is told, hey, uh, the name of the object that you're gonna render is untitled OBJ, we're, gonna, we're not gonna render the box anymore, we're gonna render the 3D object now. 
And then we have a Q3D sprite. And that is basically a regular sprite, but in 3D. So if you ever dealt with a 3D game engine, think of a plane, but only set to where you could see the um, the face of it. So in, in, in a way it is uh, 2D. And our 3D object is down here. Uh, for some reason, again, this is one of the issues with Q3D is that it kind of, if, you, if I were to put this up right in the center and I hit run layout, it'd be further up the, sc uh, the screen. So I have to put this down here. It's, it has some sort of like offset. So it's not like where you could recenter it like a regular sprite. So it is actually kind of annoying. There we go, we can leave them like that. Okay, so we hit the button. Um, we're actually going to be setting its textures. By doing that, we're going to click on the actual object himself. And as you can see in Sprite, uh, if you ever dealt with uh, Construct 2 or in, its, in a way um, Game Maker, it's kind of like the same thing. We have uh, some sprites, except these are setting the textures. So we have texture 1. And then we have texture two. And when we go to uh, the object is like on sort of layout, uh, Q3D, remember set animation texture to diffuse map. Or as you, if you could, um, if once you saw, I named, let's go look at the animations, boom. This animation is called diffuse map. That's saying, oh, we're looking for something called diffuse map. Let's pull it up. And anything called the fuse map and has the zero. Okay, this is going to be its texture. Uh, and then we're going to look again for diffuse map. Okay, we found it. Uh, this time we're looking for one. Okay, we found it. We're going to place those as textures on this object. Every tick, we're going to rotate around a local space of zero, one, zero by one degrees. And then on start of uh, lay um, on left click blue uh, purple button in this case it's the key 3d sprite to go to the next layout so very simple um, let's see if we can do a little bit more I'm going to show you guys how to import some 3d model stuff so we're going to go to q3d model I'm going to place a new one right here and I'm going to set his texture as red right there. Now it doesn't show it because I have to on debug properties editor representation and this is the editor I want it to set to texture. There you go. It goes red. Now how do we actually show this as being um, you know an, an actual object? But well, There it is right there. Now what I have to do is I'm going to click on this. As you can see, it's referencing my objects.obj. That's a cube. I don't want a cube. I want untitled object. Now, um, this is when you import. So we're going to click right on files and import. And then you can click on uh, something like untitled obj. It always has to be an obj. And then we're going to paste untitled. And then we're going to type in dot obj. And then we're going to set that and then we're going to click on it make sure it's that it's uh, clicked on uh, that it's a highlighted blue debug box off collider debug off use model yes so yes we actually do want to use the model then we're going to run the layout there you go there it is imported it says offset so i'm going to click on my original model and I'm going to correct its rotation. Okay, we're going to run the layout again. This should fix it. And it's just hidden, so we have to move him. And there you go. There's the 3D model. 
Okay, so uh, in the next part, we're going to work on a little menu. So that uh, will actually the second part of the layout deals with a animated sprite and a simple background. Uh, it's fairly easy. We just have this render and then we have the black and white background and on, on the bottom is our actual character. So you have our animated character, then you want to put the background on the back and then you want to have the render and that's how I was able to get it to work. Now our sprite is set like any other sprite. Again, it's pretty basic. At this end you have our sprite animations. Uh, we can rename this to Professor and set to 15 frames. Set it to loop, repeat, count once. I'm going to put the link down below for you guys to play around and look at. But I'm gonna in our next episode we're going to have like some text boxes down below so the professor is going to talk and then we're going to choose whether we're a guy or a girl and then we're going to choose from a list of names what we want our name to be and then we're going to run around in a little 3D world. Um, again, it's not like gonna work, it's not like we're going to be catching Pokemon or anything like that. We're just going to be moving around a 3D world. Again, I think Q3D is a huge step forward for Construct 2. I just believe that it needs a a lot more work into it. Um, it's probably one of the best 3D renders for Construct2 out there. I believe that Construct2 should at least have the uh, background architecture built in. So even if they don't want to go into 3D, uh, the community can get together and put in a 3D little you know, pseudo engine where we can actually move stuff free, uh, by freehand, uh, just like in the Unity or in any other type of 3D engine. But that's just my saying it. Um, I'll see you guys in the next episode. If you have any comments, comment down below. If you have any suggestions, please put them also down below. If you need any help, um, e shoot me on my uh, shoot the email down below, or you can shoot me an email uh, my. On my YouTube about page, there's an email that you can uh, get to me. I usually check it basically every single day to see if anybody's commented or if uh, anybody needs any help. I'll see you guys next time. Enjoy.